pop quiz. Fuck Churchill. What? That's it. <laughs> Hey, welcome back to our stupid directors of Corbin. I'm Rick. And you can follow us on Instagram, it's Twitter, for juicy content. And Patreon. And Patreon. There's stuff I put over there I don't put anywhere else. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, please do it, Daddy. Yeah, what? if you want to see me put things where I've never put them before, go to Patreon. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Nipple. <N> Nazi. <laughs> <laughs> That's a weird way to say Churchill. Well. Oh, wait. No, it's not. It fits. If the if if the fat pants fit, yep, the fat yeah, naked pink boy, yeah, cunt. Anyway, fat naked pink boy, <laughs> Winnie Churchill. Today we're doing a movie review. <laughs> if you if you can't guess what it is, you can't read because it was in the title. Yeah, <laughs> and if you don't know what that is, you haven't been paying attention, like us. Yeah, today uh, we're doing a movie review of the uh, Sacha Rai film. Oh, Ro, as the Bengalis say. Yeah. Uh, wow, they don't. They don't. Uh, <laughs> Uh, 1973 film. I it, was four. It. Do you have the actual name of it? Yes. It's called... The, uh, the English translation is obviously Distant Thunder. Yes. But that is not... It starts with an A or something no, like that. No, it starts with... Uh, well, crap. Where did I put... Ah, uh, man. I had it. Um, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Poop! Distant. Here you go. I, I got it over here. Tur. Talk amongst yourselves. It is called... Uh, Ashani Shonket. Ashani Shonket. Um, Ashani Shonket. The Which is Distant Thunder. Yeah. 1973 <laughs> film by Sachit Rai. Yeah. Uh, we've been uh, highly requested. One, it's Sachit Rai, so obviously we're going to watch everything. Everything is done. done uh, before we are done, hopefully. Um, but it's also, we, whenever we talked about like films that had to deal with the famine, yeah. this is one, obviously, that came up. A lot, and obviously, understandably so. Uh, yes, because that's what it's dealing with. Uh, yes, the, and, the... and because there are so few films about this Which is event, so strange to me. Yeah. It. Anyways, we'll get into that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so if you haven't seen it, go watch it. It's on Amazon. Yep. Uh, so you can go watch it there. It's only a hundred. Uh, it's yeah. an hour thirty essentially. Yep. It's a ninety-minute um, movie. Uh, most of his films are. Yeah. That or he shorter, clipped man. him. He. Uh, he said what he had to say. Yeah. Anyways, but uh, it'll be 100 cents spoiler reviews. So if you haven't watched it, please go watch it and come back. Rick, your initial thoughts, please. Um, I don't like the fact that we're counting down the films that we're no longer going to have. Like, I, as I was watching it, I was thinking there's, we're going to come to a point here where we will have seen all of his films. How many films does he have? I, that I don't know off okay. the top of my head, but okay. but um, that makes me sad. Yeah, it does. thinks that we will... To think we will He's have such a great director because he is a great director. So, what a shock! Uh, love this film. Yeah, um, there's a lot I can say about it. Where does uh, it Where does it rank for you, uh, off the top of your head? Oh man, that's so hard. That's how good he is. Yeah, it's so hard to rank. I think in terms his of films, I still think in terms of like how much I just enjoyed the overall film. Big City is probably still my favorite. I loved Big City. It is. I think uh, uh, for me, such a well made film. Said, you know, but, Opu trilogy is yeah. one film, and that's yeah. that's the crown. Yeah. Big City's next. Yeah. But this one is. This so, is in my top five. This is so important. Though. This one's this one's in my top five for sure. Yeah. It, it may be in my top three. Yeah. It's so important because the hero though is so cinematically different oh, and yeah. daring for him. It's hard to rank. It's really hard it's really, to rank. We're ranking films. Uh, surprise, surprise! This is going to be us just talking about how great he is and how yeah. great a film this is. Yeah. So it's uh. I, yeah, I really, really enjoyed this film. Um, it's the only thing I wished was different was the fact that I wish it was almost in a different time so he could go farther. It's interesting you said that because I, I specifically, I think, he, I, I think he did for the time. I think he went as far think, as he could go. I think he did for the time, and I think he did for the amount of money he could spend. Yeah. And I asked that of Indrani, and did she we'll, it we'll never know. Uh, no, she actually did but not she's watch seen it with it me. She, yes. And I, I said, I wonder if, if Rai was around today, and he had the kinds of budgets that are available to filmmakers right now. I wonder if he would. How much of his storytelling would change, or if he would still keep it as simplistic? I think he would still keep it as simple as he does. I think so. Uh, um, I, I don't think the challenge. I, I think for him, if there's something he wanted to do, he would have somehow found the money to get it accomplished. Yeah. Um, 
And but there are so many things I think he could have done. One of my favorite things about this is he takes something that is on and I think it was intentional. I bet if you had talked to him about it or if there's interviews about it, he took something that is so massive in its scale, the Bengal famine and all of the contributing factors and the millions who died, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And brought it down and made it an extraordinarily personal story so that you could feel the impact of this on a personal mm -hmm. level. It's kind of like the pianist and the Holocaust, where yeah. you've got a film that's focusing on one man's life, yeah. but it gives you the feeling of the totality of, of the Holocaust. Yeah, I just don't understand why there hasn't been more, like, because obviously it's different than obviously what happened at, um, uh, for Schindler's List. Because even though obviously millions upon millions of people died, that's very similar, and it was obviously done by a person. And yeah. But obviously that has to do with concentration camps and, and all that kind of stuff, actual physical abuse. And I know there was that. And so I feel like you could make an incredibly Schindler's List-esque film you now. Have have um, the guy who made um, uh, Sardar Udan. Uh, what's his name? Yeah, um, if you could say films plural could be made. Yeah, you could make a whole series. Think about all the films that have been made about World War II. Yeah. And specifically focusing on the atrocity of the Holocaust. Talk about a... Oscar bait in terms of it would that's that's a film obviously that would get recognized obviously if it's done well and, correct and there are enough big players in Indian cinema it's like hey guys note to self obviously it should be a Bengali film but yeah it, it really should but, but like it, it it absolutely I just don't even should be told just, and should be told on a grand scale because I guarantee you outside of India uh, for the most part 99% of the rest of the world have no idea no. About the Great Bengal Famine. No. And what and who caused it. In the same way that <laughs> most people aren't aware of, like, as is the case in most places, uh, history is told by the victors. So in addition to not knowing that, for example, when we're taught World War II, we're not taught about the bombing of Dresden. And the bombing of Dresden, if you don't know what that is, there's a very good documentary on the B a BBC ironically, wonderfully, has done it on what Churchill and America did yeah. in bombing a civilian location with no military installments because it was going to be like it was when they were doing their bombings in yeah. Bengal, scorched earth policy and the collateral damage didn't matter. Yeah. Um, and so they, they, they obliterated countless thousands of civilians simply because they were going to do you know we hear about hitler yeah. bombing indiscriminately not, you don't hear about america and, and and england a, doing a, it a, a great quote from norm mcdonald obviously the the great uh, comedian norm mcdonald r.i.p um he said isn't it funny how um the good guys always won right <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's how I, that's that's kind of uh <laughs> it's it's amazing. Yeah, How the good guys always won. No, and it, 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 it isn't. Is, it's a joke. <laughs> and, no, and there's so many factors to take into this. It's a it's massive in scope, and I just don't but know just, why more people wouldn't. But anyway, let's talk about. I, I just feel like rise there needs to be telling. more. Like have uh, a Sardar Udam epic film. Yes, about this. Yeah, like there's. I just. I want that film because I think more I people too. need to know about this. Anyways, I know, me but too. I, yeah. I want to praise obviously Rye at first because he is the first one we've seen that's really gone into depth a little bit of of the the famine, um, and and that kind of stuff. But also, and for the, whom it's personal for the 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 um, risks and the boundary pushing. That he did, yeah, in 1973, when Indian Indian film, he had people essentially selling their bodies for rice. He yep, rape. He had um, uh, all all this different other stuff. He had the, the good guys dealing with untouchables. And exactly. The, yeah. Everybody's almost a great character. System being I, obliterated. Um, I almost like. I don't know how you felt about him. Uh, I I really didn't like our lead guy. I throughout the whole thing. I you mean the character as the written character. in the script, yeah. not the performance. No, no, yeah, no, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I agree. Yeah, um, and that but, was interesting that he had him be 
this style was. of character, a kind of guy who's kind of almost taking an advantage, and like I'm a pri- I have privilege right now. Right, who I'd... cinematically audiences would have known this guy as the lovable, yeah. likable guy that you're rooting for. Yeah. And um, I was like, I'm not really rooting for you. No, but <laughs> what I loved, and I mentioned this to Indrani as well, I love the fact that, isn't it interesting, that when things are going your way, all of these human attributes that are one of the biggest contributors to the problems on Earth, which are caste discrimination, patriarchal discrimination, mm-hmm. educational discrimination, just fill in the blank discrimination. When you reach a point of desperation, all of that flies out the window. Mm-hmm. What was once an untouchable person now becomes somebody that you care about because you see them as a human being. What was once something you would never do in a million years because it goes against your religious beliefs, well, now you're going to do it because without it, you're going to die. Yeah. Uh, it, it, I felt like he was pretty unflinching yeah. in his his depiction of that. And that's one of my favorite things I about the film. I thought it was really interesting because obviously our, our lead girl, the wife, um, at the beginning after she bathed, she came in and she literally told the girl, don't touch me, I'll have to bathe again. Right. And this is the, the caring person that we're all rooting right. for throughout the film. The empath. And she's, she's like, the don't, empath. don't touch me, I will have to bathe again. And I'm like, which oh. is Which is and why... he comes back full circle at the end. It does. It comes back full circle. And it does for him as well, because when he says what he says about... You know, he touches her and says that we need to give her a proper, crema- a proper cremation. He's come to that place of recognizing... She's a, everybody, human. she's a human being and everybody's dying and I, I really loved I felt like a pinnacle point for him was when the guy who was not giving food to anybody else that was asking says I gotta give it to you you're a Brahmin and he's sitting there looking at the food and he's like my wife isn't eating this I was, all of these other I was people him hard. are starving <laughs> And he's coming to that realization of all of these human systems we've put into place at the end of the day. Really? And why does it take something that's catastrophic to get people to see that those things really aren't what they are? That they're just these human contrivances that are designed to feed ego and arrogance and greed and patriarchal uh, prejudices. It's, it's, it it's a, brilliant. I thought that scene was really good when he sat down to eat. And yeah. I was judging him real hard. Of course. Uh, at that moment, I'm like, the fuck's wrong with you? Just, yeah. Like, you could literally take all that back I, with you exactly, to, your wife, to your wife. And you're just about to stuff your face, you cunt. And one, one of the <laughs> other things I really enjoyed, I don't know if you felt this way or if you were a step ahead with, with Rye, did you assume... Who the rapist was? We weren't shown the face. Oh. And I know what he's wanting us to think as yeah. an audience. He's yeah. wanting us to think it's the, it's the scarred up man. Yeah. But it wasn't. No. Yeah. No, I didn't catch it. I didn't. I didn't. Yeah, I didn't see that either. I, I thought it. it was the scarred up guy. Yeah. Uh, Which is another such an interesting... The, the, the way, obviously, Rye decided to handle that character mm-hmm. as... He, he's a garbage person, but also he's technically still, and he's not going out and raping people. It's right. almost a transaction for him. <laughs> it, it is. It's manipulative. It's yeah, transactional. Oh, it's awful, but it's like it, the way, like for 1973, he's handling someone who you could essentially qualify as uh, a conniving rapist, right? Right. Uh, essentially, because these women don't really want to have sex with them. They're no. doing it to feed their family so they don't die. Right. <laughs> and he, he knows that. Yep. <laughs> but he's but, also aware of the fact that this is really the only way I'm going to get physical intimacy because no one wants to come near me. Yeah, it's it's really interesting how he decided to handle that character. And again... And all the characters. And again, that's also... That's the thing, is he made all of these stories about these singular people be emblematic and analogous of the wholesale horror that was the, the famine, because that was a big deal with particularly women, many who had to leave the villages and go into the city, and the only way they could subsist was to sell their bodies because mm-hmm. disgusting, evil men of all ilks. There were Indian men that did this. Mm-hmm. There were British men that did this who took an opportunity and went, oh, you need to eat? I can feed you if you have sex with me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's, and then it's super interesting uh, how, obviously, the, the, the woman who did end up having uh, sex to get the rice 
from the scarred up guy when she came back to our lead actress and she, the lead actress was judging her right and i was like really right you're judging her right now like, right she's, she's trying not to die exactly and you're all over here with your privilege and you're and yeah, and if you didn't have that privilege, yeah, who's right to say here. you wouldn't have been doing that? You'd be right here with me. Yeah. So I thought it was so so good of of Rye to make this such a, a real but mm -hmm. complex, not just a oh we don't have rice and yes. we're all dying. Even though obviously there was that, and I thought there was so many good things he did with that. Like at the end, he didn't show anybody's face. Mm -hmm. It was just there's shadows. all these sh faceless shadows of people, you know. Uh, the the migration or the uh the, them just dying yeah. powerful shot of the little girl dead right there the the powerful end shot as well um he he did such a good job with this i just i wish it would be more of a there there needs to be a contemporary telling there needs of this. to be a contemporary telling that, that shows is, the reality of the horror that is as the horrific as you know obviously the emirates are yeah they're in in sardo even that more whole thing but you could stretch it out into an entire film uh or series no just I, to give it to obviously i don't know who the 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 big bengali director is of the day i think it needs to be handled by a bengali i think it should um, be told by bengalis for sure but this i i just i just don't understand why it hasn't like this is such a this is part of the history and it's a huge part of history the sad the sad reality as to why it's probably not been told as of yet on the scale mm. that we know it can be told yeah no one cares enough really you don't think so? Maybe. Why else wouldn't it be made? I have no clue. It's for the same reason we've never heard the story until we started doing this channel. Yeah. And why if we talked to a hundred Americans, 99 out of a hundred would probably tell you they've never heard about the Bengal famine. And that's because not enough people care. Yeah. to tell the story unless they're indian of course obviously they'll probably know yeah but. it's just it needs it it needs for the sake of history not repeating itself and for the memorialization of those who died do you think it's it needs to be told with the horror intact do you think it's also because obviously indian cinema is more geared towards happiness and happy feelings it family, is because obviously if you're like hey go see this film where millions upon millions of people die that's not really a box office draw. Yeah, especially if it's not going to fill you with nationalistic pride. Um, if it did have that aspect to it, I think it would be more likely to be made and seen. But granted, I could be wrong because obviously look how much money Kashmir Files made. It did, but that movie is particularly made, not just for in Hindus. the telling of the story, for Hindus. but it is made with a particular viewpoint and yeah. it does have a very particular national yeah. pride because of how many Hindus there are I in India. Like you, you could have national pride with this. Just you, obviously you could. Came if it, over it. How it was told. But yeah. if you're going to tell it in the totality of its complexity, there's going to be quite a bit. It needs bit. to be Schindler's List, essentially. It and there, to, there's, and there's going to be quite a bit of unflattering depictions of people in Indian power. Yeah. Now, the bulk of the responsibility fully falls upon Britain and America. Yeah. But... Um, but I thought all the actors did really, obviously, um, yeah, who Sumitra seen Chatterjee. many, obviously, times, and Apu and, and others. Sumitra, right? That's what yeah, he was Sumitra in? Yeah, Sumitra Chatterjee. I think he did a really good job. He made me kind of almost dislike his character almost immediately. Mm -hmm. He was almost this elitist kind of... Yeah, just the way he talks to everybody. Relig he, like, Call Calling religious. his students fools. Yeah. You uneducated fool. Don't ask me that. Yeah. Don't, get, like... Yeah, he, he definitely made me not like him. But the two, uh, like, the, our, if you say our main girl, uh, yeah. she did really. Bobit, Bobita? Bo Bobita, and it's my understanding that this was, like... Great her, opening shot of her in the water as well. It was. Her one and only internationally known film. Oh, really? Yeah, which she's, is surprising. She's, she's really good. She was really wonderful. And uh, I, I thought the entire cast, had, but then this yeah. is the other girl that uh, ended up sleeping with the, yeah. the scarred she man. She played um, Chut... Chut I don't remember the character's name. Chutka, Chut. I don't remember. Uh, yeah, Chutki. That's it. Thank you. Um, Sandhya Roy. Sandhya Roy. I thought did really, really well as well. Um, I th like I said, I thought everybody in it did really well. It wouldn't surprise me if he hired just a bunch of locals again. For sure. Which I feel is what like that's one of his calling cards. Is outside of maybe your leads. Yeah. Mostly the rest of your cast. The is smaller be cast, especially with this, it would be. I need you to look a certain way. Yeah. Yeah. I'd imagine, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, my favorite thing about Rye 
and virtually all of his films, but especially this one, especially Opu, uh, even uh, Two, the the, the yeah. short film. Yeah. He's so minimal. Yeah, he is. In everything that he does, he's minimal in the scope of his cinematography. He's minimal in the uh, the scoring. He's minimal. There, it was surprised me. There was a bit of exposition at the front of the film that shocked me. I was like, "That's not typical of you." However, yeah. this is taken from a book. Yeah, it is. So I think he was probably wanting to engender some of it yeah. as authentically as possible. Yeah, which probably had some exposition. Yeah, I noticed that as well. Um, but. It's just cinema and film doesn't get any better it's, than Sachi Jirai. It just doesn't. It's probably top three for me. Um, the the ones I'm think, even though I've I've enjoyed every single one of his films, uh, but and this is probably if you're talking about importance, I, that's what I, I was just thinking. It's probably the most. Important it's the most important of his. Uh, just, well, now Opu has a level of importance because I feel like in terms of cinema history, you know, cinematic history and Bengali history. Yeah. I, mean, I feel like. That movie is the quintessential mark of Rai, and it's so Bengali that, like, it's like taking that film out of the canon as the number one is like removing fish and rice out of Calcutta as part of the culture. You know what I mean? It's yeah. so essential yeah. to who he is and, and Bengali cinema. Unless I'm forgetting something, I think my, my top three would be uh, Big City. Uh, the hero, and then this probably, unless I'm forgetting one that 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 we watched. That I, I like. I said I've liked all of them. It's really difficult to rank his films. Uh, another one that I love for different reasons, and it's because it feels like a play. Was the stranger? Oh yeah, the stranger was amazing. And that, that's again, that's that a, one could my be top, top five. Yeah, like, <laughs> it's the, all, probably all of his films are my top five. But for the, the thing that would push me, like artistically script some of the performances some of the dynamics and some of the interesting rod serling stuff he does cinema cinematography wise um the hero trumps this yeah it's so unique for but him. i feel like this trumps the hero in the fact that it takes something so profoundly large and minimalizes it without losing any of its profundity yeah and no film he's done is more important yeah without question it's like spielberg Spielberg's made a lot of great films. I love, he's my favorite director of all time. I'm looking forward to the film that's coming out. He'll never make a film more important than Schindler's List mm. because that can't be forgotten. Jurassic Park. Close second. Yeah, yeah. close second in because, terms of importance. Because, I mean, look at what we did to the dinosaurs. Yeah. They would have been here if it wasn't for us. It's awful. Ugh. We are the Churchill to the dinosaurs. What's true? Uh, anyways, <laughs> <laughs> let us know uh, what you, what you thought about this film. Uh, and what should be our next Rye film mm -hmm. that we should watch? Uh, obviously, I'm sure he has many, many more that we need to. And any other films that go into the the famine as well? Yeah. I think Earth with Amir Khan, 1947. I think, or maybe it's the part. It was about that. I, I don't know if it's about the famine or if it's about the partition or both. I can't remember. It's about one of them though. Uh, like it, it, it goes into the that thing. But if there are more. Let us know, and I feel like just if you're a filmmaker watching, you just make this make this into an epic story, man. All you need, all you need is somebody with the passion to tell the story and get ignited by somebody who sees it and wants to help it, like an Anya Rog would, you know? Yeah. Or, or, or an, an SRK with the, with the power of Red Chilies to say, I'll, I'll, I'll fund this. Yeah. I, I feel like somebody out there has got a script, has a treatment, has something. There shouldn't just be one film about this. We should have five internationally known films about this massive, massive humanitarian man-made. I know there was a cyclone and some stuff, but the majority of the deaths that happened here were man-made yeah. during World War II. Yeah. Anyways, let us know what the next Rye film should be and what you thought about this film down below. <laughs>